Hey guys, it's Laura, and I'm excited to be here with you today doing a bug catching tutorial. So this is kind of a home science how-to, and um, just sharing some ideas on how to incorporate nature study in your home. So this is Ben and I. Um, we have four girls. Savannah is eight, Emmaus is six, Madison is four, and Abigail is two years old. And right now, um, our girls are full-time home with me. Um, and I'm going to share in another video a little bit about our journey in home education as a family. Um, our girls have done some things out of the home as well um, and have enjoyed that, but love having them home and excited to share more thoughts on that from our journey. But for now, back to bugs. So entomology is the scientific study of insects. And like I said, my girls right now are eight and under. So as far as the depth of the kind of study that we're doing, for us, it's looked a lot more like incorporating and just having eyes turned towards insects throughout our days. So this is a, a collection um, that we put together in 2020. And all of these bugs were either found in our backyard or out on a nature walk somewhere at a park or a friend's house. Um, but as the season went on, uh, my kids began to recognize the names of certain bugs um, and identify them and become more familiar with them and kind of just the world around them. Another thing I love about doing this and do it, having a display case is, um, you know, butterflies are normally going fast. You're walking by them at a park, you're not paying attention, but when you really get close and see the detail on them, it's amazing just the different kinds and colors and details. Um, this is a wheel bug that um, we've had a lot of them in our backyard, and I never knew the name of them until I started this with my kids, and it's one that they're familiar with now. Wow. <laughs> it has a leaf on its back. He looks like he has a leaf on his back, and he would blend he right in with a tree, super, super and he's got cool. shiny. Mom, can we do 10 now? So getting started, a lot of these things that you would need, you probably already have around your home, Ziploc bags, a freezer, bug pins, a bug net, Tupperware container, paper towels, rubbing alcohol, and if you want to keep your bugs around, a display case. One thing I recommend for your net is to keep it with you at all times. Um, the end of the season this year, the butterflies had just been flying faster. They had been harder for us to catch for whatever reason. And we were at a park and there was two that were landed totally hanging out. I think my kids or I could have got them very easily both together, but I did not have my net with me. So um, just a suggestion, keep your net in the back of your car. Um, and a lot of the, the times that we found bugs, um, they were just times that we were out on a walk. Here our dogs were with us. And um, if you've got Ziploc bags with you as well, um, then you're able to kind of pull out of nature things and, and let your kids look closer. Here Abigail, who's two, is getting to look more closely at a bug that might have flown away before. Um, and that's a benefit to the bags as well. If you want to preserve your bags, then put them in the freezer when you get home. <laughs> and I suggest leaving them in for at least 24 hours, maybe a little longer. A dragonfly like this is pretty easy to pin afterwards, but if you have a butterfly, you're gonna need to put them into the relaxing chamber, which is can be just a Tupperware container, a moist paper towel, um, some foil if you want, but that's gonna help soften their wings so that they're not gonna break. They're really fragile um, and this, uh, they can stay in there for even up to a couple days just to kind of help soften them up. This was a butterfly we discovered this last year um, that had really neat reflective silver on the back of its wings. Um, so, yeah, this one was even still a little bit difficult to get flattened out afterwards. Um, you can use rubbing alcohol to remove the smell from them. So that I used for the dragonfly or to help preserve the color. And so I tried that for the butterfly. Um, when you're getting ready to pin your insects, um, the display case I originally ordered came with thicker pins and I had purchased some skinnier pins online um, and found those to be just, I was more comfortable using them and I was less likely to break the bugs apart. But probably inevitably one of your bugs will break. There were many heads that popped off in our collection and super glue 
went a really long way to help put them back together. So after you've pinned them, you're going to start to identify them. And um, the pocket guides um, that are kind of like field guides for bugs that you can get for your area helped have helped a ton um, finding bugs um, that I had no idea what the name of them would be other than it's a butterfly or I think it might be a moth. Um, this can really help you um, find out the name of your bugs. Savannah, what are you looking for? That bug. This one here. That's fuzzy on the back. Mm -hmm. Hold it a little bit closer to the bug. There we go. Look at that. And that's where he was drinking the nectar. He's missing one antenna. Uh. But that's okay. Pretty cool. Okay, and there were some bugs that I could not find in a field guide, and that was when the internet was great, just typing in keywords um, that I thought um, would pull up the bugs. And um, that was one way that worked really well. Um, and then here's another set of butterflies uh, that were found in our backyard that were in another field guide. Um, okay, so Emmaus... Emmaus has got a beetle that we're trying to, to figure out the name of, and I think it might be the Dor, D-O-R beetle. But look at the bat! Yes, he's big, isn't and he? And look at the fun guys! Yeah, will you hold him over here so they can see his size? He's a big beetle, isn't he? And he was in our neighborhood, whoop, this way. He was in our neighborhood on a, on a walk one morning on, on the pavement, going pretty slow. So we're going to get him labeled. Great job. Thank you, Emmaus. Welcome. So this is a woolly bear caterpillar that Madison saw out on a walk. Um, and she caught it and then uh, had a Ziploc bag. So she put it in there and took it home. And he is now still on our counter in a jar and I'm hoping that my kids and I are going to get to see him change into a moth. So we'll see. What is it? What color? Red. Red. Black and red. So here he is on the uh, on the counter, and um, I will let you know if he makes it to a moth. Uh, here's another caterpillar that we saw this was a monarch and so you can even study the life cycle of um, caterpillar with your kids. Um, okay so here is um, what the bugs look like once they are pinned in your collection. Um, my kids enjoy picking them up looking at them um, again, they are pretty delicate, so you have to be careful. Um, this was a bug that we were unsure of the name for a bit, but then ended up discovering that there is such thing as a black horsefly. So it was fun to hear the names my kids came up with for that bug before the real name was found. Um, so yeah, it's just amazing to me, um, how much nature and wildlife is around us and how many bugs there are if you are paying attention. I was looking for some more details on a praying mantis online and found this in a search that this is an Indian flower mantis. You're not going to find it in the Midwest, but how amazing just the details and the wonder that are hidden in creation. Um, and every year I feel like it's an adventure and it's just kind of even teaching your kids how to appreciate um, learning in a lifelong way. Um, this is the bug collection from 2021, sorry, 2021, um, that I uh, was working on putting together and um, used some different colored construction paper to help um, organize them. And then here are the pins. These are skinnier pins that um, I prefer. I ordered the bug case um, off of a home science site online and it came with uh, a few bug pins with, with it, but they were quite a bit thicker. Um, the circumference of the pin, um, this is uh, one of the ones that came in the set. And then if you see it held up here next to 
um, the skinnier pin that I bought in this set. I was much more comfortable pinning my bugs with a skinnier pin because they are so fragile. Um, just if you're pinning a butterfly, a smaller butterfly or a dragonfly, um, and even this, this thicker beetle, uh, I'm, it, I'm sure it would have held up with a thicker pin, but the skinnier pin, um, worked really well in this collection. And so I just thought, why even chance it? So here is the butterfly, um, the fritillary, the great spangled fritillary. We, we found out my, my girl saw out on, um, a walk and I was just amazed. I'd never seen this butterfly before, um, to find, a um, just that high reflective silver on the back of its wings. Um, so beautiful and such, such a fun thing to discover. You know, sometimes, um, I think we're out of touch with the reality of the wonder that's just, you know, right in front of our eyes. Um, and this is a great way to slow down and, uh, see, see it better. Um, so you can see in the collection, there are butterflies that have broken wings and, Oftentimes I just go with it um, <laughs> just to kind of preserve um, the memory and you can learn something even from a broken bug. I did pin some of the butterflies this year upside down um, in the collection because I just thought, wow, um, it's worth it to see. Um, and then with the dragonflies, I put two together just for comparison's sake. And I think it's cool. You can get creative with the way that you want to even display your bugs or the focus you want to have um, in the case that you have out for your kids to study. Um, so you can see uh, the two butterflies over here. Um, and you're going to see on the bottom butterfly, there's two dots. That is the male monarch. You can see it better in our 2020 collection, but it was fun to discover from a friend um, who uh, knows way more about insects that the male butterflies have two dots on them, the monarchs, and the females do not. Um, so again, I chose to pin one of those upside down this year, but you could do it however you want. Um, it really is um, neat. There, You can see in the bottom right, there's a cicada. And even seeing the, the wings of the cicada up close, um, there's that black horsefly. There is just so much to learn. Um, and... It's a great way, I feel like, over time to help give your kids language and an awareness for the world around them and just to even cultivate that hunger for learning. Um, again, it's fun to have the creative, organize them the way that you want, put them together the way that you want. This is a green, a green beetle with a high reflective underside. So cool to find. Um, Savvy, what you doing? Doing school with Eliana. Here's Savannah. <laughs> like I said, I'm looking forward to making another video soon just to share a little bit more about um, our homeschooling journey. But to wrap up on bugs for now, one more great tool that you can use is a nature notebook and just a place for your kids to sketch out or draw the insects you're finding if they want to go more in depth and do more study on them. Um, that has been a great tool um, for my kids. And here you can see um, the 2020 collection on top that we made and underneath it the 2021 collection. Um, just doing a little bit of comparison and contrasting between the two, um, which is another neat way. And you can see a nature notebook on the bottom left there. Um, but we'll share more about that um, another time. So hopefully this encourages you. I'm already excited to get back out in the spring. Um, the butterflies were harder for some reason. For my girls and I to catch this year, they were flying fast. So looking forward to the spring of 2022 and exploring more. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with me here um, and for more videos coming in the future. All right. Thanks.